Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahirrahmanirrahim. Ve aftalı salatı ve aftalı tüsim ala nebiyyina ve habibina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahabihi ecba'in. Elhamdülillah. Hamdan yuvafi ni'ama. Ve yukafi vazira. Rabbana neke alhamdülillah ala yandari ve celali mashik. Ve li adhimi sultanik. سبحان ربنا نحسيتنا إن عليك أنت كما أثبت على نفسك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله وصفيه وخير رسول أرسل أرسله إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونذيرا وجعل إلى الله بإذنه وصراج المديرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما للجالبين المتلازمين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعطى الثانية لدوس الله سبحانه وتعالى يسيك الله في الدين والمعرفة 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 ونحن نتعلم من الأمور من الأمور من الأمور من الأمور من الأمور من الأمور Whoever Allah gives guidance to, none can mislead, and whoever he misleads, none can guide. I testify that there is nothing and no one worthy of worship besides Allah. He is alone, has no partners, and I testify that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. We will ask Allah to grant him peace and to extend him our salutations on this blessed day. As we ask him as well to grant peace to his family members, companions, and everyone who follows the good will and uh, in goodness and practice of good will into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, once again we are on the cusp of the blessed season. The special month we call Ramadan, the month that we know as the month fasting, the month of altruism, the month of endurance, the month of the Qur'an. And it's most importantly the month of the Qur'an because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows a night during this month to send down the blessed book, the final revelation to humanity, and that night is known as Laylat al-Qadr, the night of determination, the night of power, of scope. And Allah refers to it in Surah Dukhan as Layla Mubarakah. Inna anzalahu fi Layla Mubarakah. A blessed night. We sent it down during a blessed night. And that is, even though we know that the Quran was given piecemeal to the Prophet over a period of 20 to 23 years. Uh, but when the Quran says that, the, that this it was revealed during a night, what it means, as explained by the Prophet's cousin Abdullah ibn Abbas, was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he brought the Quran down to the lowest heaven and placed it in a house known as Bayt al the house of honor, the house of dignity. And in every one of the heavens, there's a house of worship. Similar to the house of worship that we know in this realm, we call the Kaaba, around which Allah's creatures, His creation, they make circuits. That we make circuits around the Kaaba in this realm, and in the lowest heaven, there's Beit al around which the angels they make circuits. And then the highest heavens is uh, a house called al Beit al The angels they make circuits around that. And so when Allah says he brought me, he sent it down, he sent it down to Beit al-Issa. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw fit, he would send the angel Gabriel to the Prophet Muhammad with certain parts of the Quran um, throughout the mission of 20 plus years. Um, the Quran, we celebrate the revelation of the Quran through fasting. But it's important for us to remember that fasting is not only about abandoning food and drink and sexual gratification for those who are married, but it is also 
should take benefit from the spiritual teachings and lessons of the Quran, and that is to to see ourselves as constantly evolving spiritually. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to perfect our humanity in this world. And fasting a single Ramadan is insufficient for us to fulfill or to complete our humanity. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, I have been sent for nothing more than to perfect noble traits and characteristics in people. That is part of his mission. And so fasting itself is more than simply giving up food, drink, and other types of passion. But the Quran, Allah, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافُ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَلَهَنْ نَسَّ عَلَى الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى As for the one who fears standing before his Lord and prevents the nafs, prevents himself from al-hawa, from lust, passion, his fantasy, then Jannah, paradise, will be the refuge. That is to say, that is, that is what fasting is all about. The fasting is not simply about celebration of culture, a cultural artifact. It is about preparing our souls to take in the wisdom of the Qur'an. To take the wisdom of the Qur'an. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you who believe, you who have faith, fasting has been prescribed for you just as it was prescribed for those who came before you in order that you develop a conscience, in order that you develop God consciousness, become people of taqwa. So the aim of fasting is taqwa. The aim of fasting is not simply fulfilling an obligation of Ramadan, but the ultimate aim is for us to become people of taqwa. Because with taqwa, taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach us things of the Malakut. The Quran talks about talks of two realms that exist. And mulk al Malakut, this material realm wherein we exist, we live. But the Malakut as well, the immaterial realm. Be conscious of Allah. Have taqwa for Allah, and then Allah will teach you. And it's interesting, in the verses of fasting from Surah Al-Baqarah, that at one point, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And for you to fast is good or better for you if you but do. If you but knew, meaning that there are some things that we just simply don't know. Allah is the Ali wa wa Shahada. He is the knower of the unseen and the seen. Oh, the, the knower of the indiscernible and the discernible. Allah, He is that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us over and over and over that this has to be part of our mission in this world, especially being that none of us will survive this realm. None of us will survive this realm. And this will, and no one can make this their home, even if they wish that it would, would be the case. In a hadith reported by Imam al tabarani and there's a Tabir al which is also uh, mentioned by Imam Muhammad al Azari, his Ihya al Medin, and Ibn Abi Dunya, and Kitab al Farah. In this hadith, it is said that the Prophet said, Say, Inna li rabbikum fi iyyami da'ikum nafahatin fata'arradu laha. That your Lord, He has in the days and during the days of your lifetimes, there are these gusts of winds that He sends forth, these aromatic, aromatic, uh, or these, these, these sweet smelling gusts of winds that He sends towards you. So expose yourself to them. Maybe it may it may come that you will be afflicted or stricken by one of those gusts. And you will not suffer misfortune thereafter. And so when the Prophet if we accept the authenticity of this hadith, 
Then the Prophet says, fundamentally, when he talks about not suffering misfortune, he's not talking about physical or mere material misfortune because that's shakala among the theologians. It is a reference to spiritual misfortune. It is that you be considered a shafi, a person who is wretched, a sad person, yom kiyama, which means that you will be destined for the hellfire. And so Ramadan is one of these, we call these nafahats, of these gusts of winds, of these moments where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends forth his favors, giving us opportunity to gain blessing. Even though, of course, this hadith is by Abdurrahman Suyuti actually requires the hadith to be ba'id, to be weak, that the meaning itself, the meaning of the hadith, uh, it conforms with the universal teachings of Islam and what has been taught by Prophet Islam. And of course, by mentioning that it's weak is, in, is it simply to highlight the importance of us as Muslims uh, to be very careful about what we attribute to the Prophet Islam. That this is the way of Ahlul Sunnah. In the way of Ahlul Sunnah. This is not like a Wahhabi thing. That we should be very careful about what we attribute to the Prophet Islam. And, and when it is said a hadith is weak, it simply means that it is more likely the Prophet did not say it. So there are those among us who are very much concerned with the wisdoms, and that is important for us to be concerned of mastering the wisdom that we inherit uh, from the previous nations. But we also we have to be concerned about the content of Islam, the content of preserving the authentic content of Islam. At any rate, the hadith, the meaning itself, conforms to the overall teachings of Islam. And that the Prophet taught us, for instance, that the month of Ramadan is a, a time of mercy, is a time of forgiveness. That a person, that whoever stands in the month of Ramadan out of faith and expectation of reward, then uh, his sin, whatever he has done of sin, has been forgiven before that. And whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of faith, true faith and expectation of reward, then whatever sin he has committed before that will be forgiven. And so we learn that there are these moments, these never had moments where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the gates of mercy and he, and he spreads mercy much more than there are other times. So on the day of Jum'ah, there's a special time during the day. If you pray for something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you whatever that prayer is. That, that we have special days of fasting outside of the month of Ramadan. We have additional uh, prayers that we pray beyond the compulsory prayers. Uh, we, we go pray with the Umrah. There's so many different things. All these moments, these sort of we consider to be nafahad, or these gusts of winds, and there are people that we can interact with, that places we can go. Praying in Mecca is not like praying in any other place, right? So there are these opportunities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us over and over and over, and Ramadan has come, inshallah, very soon. Mu'ad al Jabal, the student of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَحِيلَ الصَّلَاةُ ثَلَاثَ أَحْوَالِ وَحِيلَ الصِّيَامُ ثَلَاثَ أَحْوَالِ that Salah, the Salah itself, it was an uh, alteration happened to it, or three states or change of it. Three, three, there are three times when the alteration happened to the prayer, just that there are three times the alteration happened to fasting. As for the prayer, he says that the first concern is the Qibla. The, 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 the direction of prayer. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prayed towards Jerusalem for 17 months after his immigration, his migration to, uh, uh, migration from Mecca into Medina. For 13 months, for 17 months, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he revealed the verse from Baqarah, telling him to turn his face towards the Kaaba. So this is one called had one sort of alteration that happened with regard to the direction of prayer. Is that the second related to the adhan? That the Muslims, when prayer became compulsory for them to perform, um, they did not know how to alert one another to the prayers. If they, anything that they could find as a way to alert one another to the prayer, they would do so. 
They would just sit in the house, time to pray. Some of them, they would uh, uh, copy the views and they would use a horn to do so. But then a Sahabi by the name of Abdullah bin Zayd, Ibn Abdi Rabbik, or Ibn Ta'aba Ibn Abdi Rabbik, he uh, had a dream. That in the dream, there was a man who had come into the masjid and faced the Qibla wearing two, um, a, wearing a green suit, a top and a bottom. And he started to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he went on and he completed the adhan. And then after completing the adhan that we know, he then recited the same thing over and then he added the qama to salat, the qama to salat. And then he came and told the messenger about this, about this dream. And he said to the prophet, that this dream was, it was as if I was awake. I was between the state of sleeping and the sleep of being awake. And it, 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 it was, it, it was, it's like it was something real. It was virtual. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, 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 he went and confirmed. He said that, okay, this is something good and this is a true dream. And so he said to him, go teach Bilal to recite this and use it as a way of calling people to the prayer. And Bilal uh, started to, he started to make the adhan and Umar al Khattab had heard him recite the adhan and then he rushed up to the Prophet Sallallahu because he, it sort of some of a panic because he had the same dream. And he told the Prophet Sallallahu Wallahi, I saw the same thing that he saw, that Abdullah bin Zayd saw. And so the Prophet Sallallahu he said, this is greater, greater proof that it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the Qibla changed and then the Adhan became a way of calling people to prayer. And the third related to what we call Qadha. Mu'adh ibn Jabal he would find the people when they would come to the, to come to the masjid when the Prophet Sallallahu had already begun the, begun the prayer. That there would be those uh, who, who came late and they would ask Sahaba, um, which, which raka, which unit is he in? And back then you can talk during the prayer. And they would say, oh, this is the second, this is the third. Right? And they would make up those raka'at and then they would join the prayer of the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mu'adh ibn Jabal himself, he felt ashamed to do such a thing that this is the Messenger of Allah. How can I uh, separate from his prayer? So Mu'adh would come in and he would join the Prophet's prayer and then complete the prayer with him and then would make up afterwards what he had left, what, what he had left out. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told the Sahaba, لَقَدْ سَنَّ لَقَدْ سَنَّ لَكُمْ مُعَاذ فَهَكَذَا فَسْنَعُوا So, so, so uh, Mu'ad, he has initiated a sunnah for you, so do as Mu'ad has done. So he talked about these sort of three things that had changed about the prayer. With regard to the fast, he said that there are three things regarding the fast as well that had changed. And said, so in terms of the fast, in the early period of Islam, the Prophet used to fast Ashura in three months out of every month. Ashura in three, which is the tenth month of the tenth day of Muharram, and he would fast three days out of every month, and he would order the companions to do so. But then the month of Ramadan became compulsory. And this is what we call the sort of the first or sort of second change alteration that happens, and that we go now from Ashura in the three days to now Ramadan. But the Ramadan, which had been changed, gave an option to the Muslims to actually fast or not fast. That, that basically say, if you didn't fast, you just simply fed a person for each day that you fasted. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed it to, to, to what we know it now today, which is that uh, you uh, don't have the choice if you are healthy and you are a resident, you're not a non traveler. He said the third alteration happened with regard to the way that Sahaba used to fast. Which is that it was, a, it was a condition that if you're going to fast, that you, once you went to sleep at night after Maghrib, then you cannot eat anymore prior to the Fajr. <coughs> prior to the Fajr. And once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he discovered this and discovered that some people were suffering hardship because of it, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala changed the rules of the fast. <coughs> at any rate, the point is that there is great blessings, the great ni'am, Allah's blessings and his favors that he has shown to our predecessors, and we ourselves have inherited those great favors. And so during the month of Ramadan, we should uh, reflect upon these favors constantly. Remember the favors of God in order that you will be successful. 
That is what the Quran teaches us. Remember the favors of God so that we may be successful. But we also need to reflect upon our relationship to our Creator. And that Ramadan is an opportunity for us to acknowledge our, the fact that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when we see, if we don't, we see more than Ramadan, how much we are in need of food and how much we are in need of drink. We see it more than any other time during the month of Ramadan. And it is an opportunity for us to even deepen that relationship between ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Sallallahu taught us that dua mukhul ibadah. That dua, supplication, is the marrow of worship. Supplication is the marrow of worship. It's dua. And in the verses of fasting, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He says, "Wa ila sa'alaki ibadi anni fihi qareeb." When my servant asks you about me, that I am near. It is said that this is revealed because the Bedouin had come to the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him. Ya Rasulullah, is Allah, is He far away from us? Uh, is, is, he near to, is, is, he, is He near to us so, for, for, for the Najiyah so that we have a private consultation and communion with Him? And Ba'idun for the Najiyah. Or is He far away such so that we have to scream out a yell out for Him? We have to summon him, His presence. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse. When my servants ask you about me, I am near. I answer the prayers of the caller when he calls. Allah said he answers all the time. <coughs> Allah always answers our prayers. Believe it or not. Sometimes the answer is no. But the Prophet said, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the, a person will continue to have his prayer answered as long as he's not praying for something which is sinful or praying for something which will lead to cutting off ties of kinship as long as the person is not hasty. As long as the person is not hasty. The Prophet he said, that hearts are containers, and some of them contain or retain more than others. So when you, O oh people, call on him, call on him while you are certain, while you are certain to get a response. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not answer a prayer that comes from a heedless heart. He does not answer a prayer, a prayer that comes from a heedless heart. Be certain that you will get an answer. Our mother of the faithful, the mother of the faithful, when she was being asked by her nephew, Umar ibn Zubair, about this issue, about the answering of the dua, that she said there's not a single believer who prays for something, and that prayer, when it goes away, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta'ajjilahu ta'ajjilahu fi dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to him in this world or to akhira lahu fi akhira or will delay it for them in the hereafter wa idha wa idha lam idha lam ya'ajjil aw yakhtum that is with as long as the person is not hasty nor despaired from Allah's uh, Allah's answer and so it is said that one of the things, and one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers his prayers is that he, is that he utilizes the prayer as a means to deflect affliction from you in this world. It may be written that a certain affliction is going to come to you, but because of your prayers of a certain thing, Maybe not even with regard to the affliction. Because of your prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilizes the, the, the non-response as a way of warding off a particular affliction that was written that it would come to you. And the Prophet taught us, in the dua wal bala'a bayna sabai wal awdi al-qathilan. Supplication and tribulation, they are fighting with one another between heaven and earth. For yadru dua wal bala'a qabla an yanzil. 
and supplication, it repels tribulation before the sins. That is one way that your prayer is answered. And I would begin with this too. A hadith. One hadith where the Prophet said, in the that every fasting, the person who fasts has a prayer that is never rejected when he breaks his fast. Every faster has a prayer that is never rejected when he breaks his fast. At the time of prayer, it's important for us to pray for as much as we want, as much as we like, in this life and in, in hereafter. Abdullah ibn Abdul Ma'as used to gather his family together at the time of the thaw, and they would make dua together in a group. That is a nice sunnah practice to, to revive for those of us who may have um, sort of abandoned it. Come together at the time of breaking the fast. And then Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal and his Musnadi, as well as, as, well as Imam Tirmidhi and the Mahdi and Nasa'i, they relate that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Salatu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Da'watuhum. There are three people whose, fat, whose, whose prayers are never uh, rejected. And Imam al Adil, the first, the just leader. And when the Prophet is talking about leaders, he's talking about governors, he's talking about kings, he's talking about presidents, right? Or he's talking about people who have responsibility in those, in those areas. So if you're a just leader, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you, when you pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your prayer. Similar to what you saw in the life of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, the people are afraid of the da'a of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. Because when he prayed for something or prayed against someone, then it happens. But Allah will answer the prayer of the just leader. As a matter of fact, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi teaches in, in the Sabbath Hadith related by my Muslim, the Sabbath Hadith of Allah fi dhullihi yawma la dhullu illa dhullu. That there are seven people who will be, be in the shade of God on the shade where they were, on the day where there will be no shade except for his shade. And the first person he mentions is Al Imam Al Adil, the just leader, the just governor. So I said, this person, this person first is, is never rejected, it's always accepted. The second, he said, الصائم حتى يفتر The fasting person, the faster, until he breaks his fast. So while you are fasting during the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees he will answer every prayer that you have, of course with the condition that you're fasting in the right way, that you're doing a proper fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer every prayer that you have during the day. Then on top of that, once you break your fast, then one of the, the prayer things you pray for, when you break your fast, then Allah guarantees you will answer. And then he says, The prayer of the oppressed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will elevate that prayer to the, to the clouds on the day of resurrection. And the, and the gates of heaven will be open for it. For Yaqul Allah, and then Allah will say, بِعِزَّتِي لَأَنْسُرَنَّكَ وَلَوْ بَعْدَحِينَ بِعِزَّتِي لَأَنْسُرَنَّكَ and then he said, by my might, by my might, I will bring up to your aid even if after a time. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the certainty of faith, to believe that he will answer our prayers, and we ask him to, to grant us sincerity and grant us the ability to fulfill his rights during this special month from Ramadan, inshaAllah. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولكم ورساء المسلمين والمسلمات الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشهد أنبياء سيد المصريين بن محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سلم سلم كثيرا and in closing, once again, brothers and sisters, just, uh, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He bless all of you and bless all of us, inshallah, in the coming days, to grant us life to have the opportunity to fast the month of Ramadan once again. Uh, remind ourselves that there is a physical, but also a spiritual aspect of the fast. Many people fast and get nothing more than hunger and thirst from it. 
Or Baqa'il and Lishrahu, Ben Qiyam, he can lasahab. And then many people stand up in prayer at night and it gets nothing more other than a loss of sleep. That's all it is. But Ramadan is an opportunity, it's a time for us to lose sleep. It is a time for us to, 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 to abandon and sacrifice food and drink. It is a time not to overindulge. We should try our best not to overindulge during the month of Ramadan. We eat only the meal that we eat uh, once we break our fast. That's it. It'll be late anyway. And it's not good to sleep on a, on a, on a, on a heavy stomach. Right? That, you know, try not to make up for the other two meals when, when it's time to break the fast. If you can help, try not even to even think about what you want to break your fast with. Inshallah. May Allah give you the ability to do that. And not even focus on what you want to eat at night. No, but to do our best, that is the time to come together, to be, to be with our families, pray with our families, of course pray in the masjid as well, but try, to, try not to waste time, no excessive talk, <coughs> turn off the TV, don't go to the movies, right? all the other things, whatever, you know, things that we, we find difficult to do, even if you can't get off the social media, if you can, even though we know that's probably one of the most challenging, challenging things to do for most of us. But at any rate, it is an opportunity for us to practice endurance and practice self-restraint. It is a, an opportunity, a time for us to seek the perfection of our humanity, insha'Allah. Inna Allah wa malakatu wa yusalluna ala al-nadeeb. Ya ayyuhu al-adina amanu wa yusallu wa alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma a'izzat islam al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izzat islam al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izzat islam al-muslimin. Allahumma barik lana fi sha'ban. Wa balikna ramadhan. Allahumma barik lana fi sha'ban. Wa balikna ramadhan. Rabbana atina min ladun ka rahmah. Wa hayyibana min amrina rashada. Rabbana ati anfusina taqwaha. وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم حبب إلينا المال وزينه في قلوبنا أكرك إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات واغفرنا اللهم معهم بفضلك وإحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا إننا نسألك الجنة وما يقرر إليها من قول معمل ولا أوذك من النار وما يقرر إليها من قول معمل ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وصلي الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين ونقل الصلاة